we're going to continue to kind of like talk about these things and these concepts again are building on each other, but let's move on to the next one here. So if we go back to our list, we have archive and we have single. Let's talk quickly because this is, these are relatively more straightforward, at least again, the general use cases for headers and footers. And again, every page builder is going to be different, but again, the concept is you do not want to be like adding a page and then like building like a header on the top of it and then duplicating that header every single time to every page. That's not how you build websites. That's not how you do stuff. You do it more in uh, this templated variety. So let's just quickly come in and let's go to our Bricks templates over here. So we'll come in, we'll go dashboard, we'll go to Bricks. And again, Elementor is the same type of thing. We're gonna add a new one. Actually, we already have a header here. So we'll just edit this with, well, let's, let's actually do it properly. So what you would do is you would just say header, you would type in header, and then you'd come over to your template type and you have a header and you set it as header and you publish, right? Um, in my case, I'm literally just gonna edit this, this header that we already have, it's just built the same way. And then what is our header gonna do? Well, we don't need to do anything crazy here. Let's just put like a little, let's literally again, just for the, for the idea here, we're just gonna say header and we will just do a, um, we'll just do for instance, a little background. Again, this is not meant to be pretty by any means. Oops, didn't mean to do that. We'll just put a little background color in there just to know that it's there, right? And we'll change the typography color to a white, sure, okay. So there's our header, right? Great header, real good header, okay? Well, let's go back over to our single now, and oh, we don't have a header. Again, the reason we don't have a header is because we have to go to the template settings. We are editing the header template, we have to set the header template to show up on the website. It's, it, and Bricks gives you this little thing. In other places, it'll give you the, it'll give you the, same, the same situation. Okay, for adding a condition, where do we want the header to be? The header's interesting, right? Because the header's pretty much everywhere, most of the time. Again, unless you're doing something specific, which we could talk about later, let me know if you have any specific questions on that. Most of the time, headers on websites are on every page, which is every, every, every page of the website, which is the entire website. So we'll click entire website and we'll click save, okay? So now we have a header. Interesting, why did that happen? Can anybody spot the mistake? Let's go back, what happened? Okay, well, accidentally I brought in the post title thing and we were on post title. We don't want that. We want that to be heading, okay? So we wanna come back into heading. Boom, there we go. Layout and let's change this. So we're gonna call this header. It's a really important point actually to notice that because that is really that can be really confusing when you're in the builder and it's like, at, it's like bringing in things. It was bringing the post title, which in, in the builder was header, right? So that's like kind of, you know, confusing and, and kind of could sway you. But the the point is that you need to, uh, that's that's another really nice reason to always use header. It's just the same, it's just the same thing here. So it's kind of confusing, right? So the same little, same little, uh, little icon there. So it does get confusing. But now what we've done here is we've just changed that. We mistakenly put post type in there. We changed it to um, heading. We added just literally the word header in this case and we uh, are gonna reload, and there we go. So now we have a header, and that header is gonna be on every page. So if we go to the Dark Knight or whatever, and we refresh, now it's on there. If we go back to Movies, it's gonna be on there. If we go to you know Toy Story, it's gonna be on there, okay? So look at that, so now we have a header. It's really beautiful, but it's on there, right? So there we go. Now, the other question is the footer. The same exact thing for the footer. If we go to Add New Template, and we come down here, Footer, and we, we add a new one there. Um, if we come into footer here and we press edit with bricks, we can do the same thing. You can see already we have the header here. What I will do is I will just, for simplicity's sake, I will come back into the header. I will copy the section for the header. I will come into footer now. I will paste the section down here. And I think this is gonna, we'll slide this up here, get rid of that, that default one. Now what do we have down in the bottom? We have our header, we're gonna call it a footer. We're gonna press save. Again, I'm, I'll spare you the uh, the refresh here on this one. We have to set this footer to show up on the entire website. If we don't do that, the footer will not show up. So now we set the footer to show up on the entire website. Boom, there we go, we have a header, we have a footer. And the reason it's small like this is because this this actual page content, right? That the stuff that is on the page or on the, you know, on the single in the set, the, like the, the web page piece of it, the part that's on the single in this sense, that single template is only so big, 
right? It's, that's all it is. We could make that larger. And I'll show you how to do that real quick, just as an example. We get rid of footer, we get rid of header, we come into here, we go to our single, and we edit with bricks. And just as like a quick example, if we go to our section here, it's important to understand when you're in builders that show you the header and the footer and all that sort of stuff. Those are, again, templates. They're, they're there to show you what the, the website might kind of look like a little bit but they're not a part of whatever you're editing most likely. Like if you have a header that's not that's outside, that's a different template that is getting like injected into every page depending on the way in which you handle it, the way in which you you set up the conditions. So we're in the single right now, but we can see our header and footer. We're not editing that piece, that's just there. If we go to our if we go to our section of our single for instance, right? And we do something like style, layout, height, 50 view height and then we come over here and we center everything um, right here and we press uh, save now you're gonna see some different stuff here so we just added some more but I just did that to just kind of give you a visual visual the in the middle part here to try to illustrate this up top this top bar is a header template that is being injected in every page this on this specific page is the single template that is being injected in this page and this bottom one is the footer template that's being injected in this page notice i'm saying the word page but i mean like just web page in general because that term is quite ubiquitous this web page this screen the thing that this user this url right here more or less the display the, the ui on this page is completely rendered dynamically okay like completely dynamically like you set it up but after that it's rendered dynamically if we refresh Pulp Fiction now the same thing you see you see it's this it's it's this is the power okay you don't need to be making a ton of like actual pages in WordPress and doing different things this is the power of dynamic data right here I hope that gave you a very good overview of like the header and the footer situation again they're kind of easy in most cases because a lot of times they're just gonna be on in the entire website so you create them you set them like that and there's not really a ton of con uh, conditions we could talk about that further again if you have questions let me know let's talk about 404 page which is another relatively simple one in most page builders they don't really have um, there's not really a ton of uh, like you could do different things for sure but most of the time they'll have an air page so if you just go to add new and you come to the, the right hand side here in Brick specifically there's an air page you set it up in Elementor I think for instance I'm pretty sure it is literally called a 404 page but what is a 404 page maybe we should explain that real quick a 404 page is let's see if anybody has anything that's fun here if you just go to any URL and you type some gibberish afterwards then this is more or less a 404 page most of the time if you if you hit a page a web page right if you go to a URL that does not have something set to display right like it's not a specific page it's not a single it's not an archive it's not anything then you're gonna get something like this on most websites go do that go do that to your favorite website just type in some random garbage and they're gonna say most of the time error error 404 maybe they'll be like you know a little you know cute with the way that they say it but more or less it's saying you navigated to a URL that's not it's on our website but it's not an actual uh, rendered page it's just it's not really a page so the reason you do this is that people don't leave or be confused or whatever, or you just you don't want to show them a blank screen. So there's kind of like a catch-all for that in most page builders, and that is a 404 page, okay? And um, again, in Bricks, it's just 404 uh, template, and we come in here, and again, we'll just make this super, super duper simple, and we'll add a heading, and Bricks never puts it in the right spot, okay? And then what do we want it to say, right? Well, we could just say something like this for for an example why don't we just take this okay so you can make this say whatever you want it doesn't matter it's however you want to do it but the point is in this case you would express to them that they are uh, that they are in the wrong spot that they've gone off script in this case right uh, and I'll just add a 404 there and I'm gonna press save okay and then I'm gonna come into settings and I'm gonna make sure that this is showing up in our in our right conditions so we're gonna say conditions and then we're gonna say error page and save and then we come over here we're gonna refresh right here obviously this is a real page so there's no problems we'll just type in literally anything anywhere as long as it's on our on our URL and this isn't a page or anything like that we've gone off script I'll type in another thing down here you've gone off script so this page not found you can do more to edit this for sure obviously but I'm giving the idea of that is what a 404 air page template is 
automatically handles it. You don't need to worry about it. I would highly recommend you have one because if you don't have one, then depending on what theme you are, what builder you're using or whatever, you may just get like a blank page or something and that might be kind of confusing for people. Um, they might not know what's going on there. So that is another option, something kind of interesting that, uh, that you could possibly do. Okay, so that was our 404 page. Next one is search results. And I'm gonna preface this with saying that there is a default search kind of built into WordPress, like a, like a search query, like a little string in a way that you can do that. It's in most page builders. Again, it's, it's default and kind of like the core of WordPress. Um, I'm gonna preface this by saying that I'm gonna show you how to do it. But at the same time, there are ways to enhance search. There's other plugins that allow you to do, to do more specific search, to like filter and do all that sort of stuff. This is a super basic overview of this, but it is important because at some point you may want to have something searchable. You may want to be able to search the website or pieces of your website or whatever. And every single time that I've seen like really good search plugins, they do leverage the way that, that WordPress kind of um, defaultly handles it, but they're doing it in a slightly different way. But the search results template is in a lot of different builders, so it is definitely widely used, and you should kind of just have an idea of it right now. If you don't like, if you don't need this part, then you, you can skip to the next part. But it is something to maybe just have on your radar. So let me give you a little bit of info about it. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go to templates and we're going to add a new template. Again, per your builder, you're going to click search results. You're going to click, you know, results, something like that, and then you can just say like search results. Now the important point to to as you get more into this and you think about this is that we are talking about general search results. This is not like an Amazon search where you're fi filtering things or searching specific stuff. This is literally like it's looking at every page, post, custom post type, everything on your website and literally just looking for a word or the phrase that you type into the search box. Okay. So that is more or less kind of what's, what's happening here. So again, it's it's definitely limited out of the box, but it is still a founding piece of, of what you are doing and what you might wanna do. So it is important to understand. So if we're gonna edit our search results with bricks, the question becomes, well, what are we what are we doing? Like what, are, like what are we actually building here? Well, the best example that I could find is, there's one on IMDB, but this isn't built with WordPress. This isn't the same, like this is definitely a different type of searching, different type of, uh, way that they can do this. You can uh, honestly, you can see like if I type in inception, that's the term that I'm searching for. And then really good searches will be able to break that out. Meaning like they'll be able to have titles, they'll be able to have people um, in this case, like different types of stuff because you don't just want to search like super generalized, but that is the way that WordPress operates. So for instance, I found a good, a good example, which is just the white house's website, which is built in WordPress. And you can come up here and you can just type in like hello or something. Okay. So this is what I would classify as your stereotypical WordPress search results page. Let's take note of a couple things and then we can try to build something kind of similar in our, in our realm, okay? So notice the URL bar, very first thing, slash question mark S equals hello. This little, I, I guess, I don't know if it's a parameter or this is the parameter, but this little like string here, this little question mark and then S equals, that is again the default way that WordPress processes, um, you know, searches. So, and I'll actually give you another example. Like, I mean, you could literally just change it in the URL bar. There's nothing magical happening in that form field, that search form field. You are just pa really passing it in to this um, this thing here. So, um, I don't I don't know what else can we what else can we write in here? Um, you know, what's what's another example? Like remarks or something. Okay. So that just all that did in the in the URL bar, changing that URL changed the uh, changed what we searched for. It said hello before, now it says remarks, okay? So there's nothing, I don't know if this is the technical way to describe this, okay? But there, there's nothing like programmatically going on. There's not like you're putting it into the little search thing and then it's running some sort of like, uh, you know, backend program to search anything. It is literally just like another way of grabbing all the, I mean, there's obviously some sort of algorithm to get, the, to get this information here, but you're not, and we'll talk about how to display it, but my point is like, that is how it operates, okay? It's all seen and edited and searched literally kind of like right in the bar here, um, just by default. So just so you understand that, okay. So then what do we see here? Well, we just see like basically a, a, a loop of posts, right? And those loop of posts are specific to uh, the search results that we're, that we're looking for. Just to illustrate the point further, I wanna show you one quick thing as we 
start to build out this search results template. If we come back over here to the White House website and we copy this, just this last this last little bit here, right? And then we come to our website and we come to right here, just like the regular website is good. And then we paste that at the end, okay, with the slash. And then we press enter. Look at this. This is kind of interesting. So again, this is kind of just like the normal, I'm not sure if it's a bricks thing or, or you know, WordPress thing kind of by default that's just injected in here. But we didn't create this, yet we already have one. So a lot of these things that you were creating, these templates, you already have kind of like built in maybe to some degree like default templates depending on, you know, WordPress like defaults versus whatever you layer on top of it, whether it's your builder or your theme or what have you. But in this case, again, if we're talking about the, all I did here, we haven't done anything yet. I mean, we created a, a template, but we didn't set it. We didn't design it. We didn't do anything. We already have like search results. And the reason these things are in here is because you want to have something. If something, if somebody ever does like, you know, try to like look at your website and see if they can like manually search something or whatever, but you can try this. This is a really actually fun exercise is if you find a website that is built with WordPress, you can just do like a, you know, you know, a question mark S equals, and then whatever you want to search. And then it should bring up something, either a custom one that they've created or just the default one. So in this case, we searched, we literally searched our demo website for the word remarks. Okay. And it says search results for, and it has our header, it has our footer, and it says nothing found because obviously nothing, you know, is going to be found um, because we don't have anything on this website that says remarks. But if we come in here and we say pulp, for, ex for instance, okay, well, that's interesting. We have pulp. We have Pulp Fiction, and it has Pulp in it, and this automatically has this, you know, link over to our single now, and all that. So that's kind of interesting. But here's the problem, though. Okay, the way that again this was designed to work initially was a blog, and this is the default template. And as you can see there, it says Pulp Fiction. And it says May third, twenty twenty four. What the hell is May third, twenty twenty four for? Well, that is actually the publish date of that post, which in most cases, you know, unless it's an actual blog post or maybe an event or something like that, it's not going to matter. Like it's, it's unnecessary. It's unneeded. You really don't want to see that there because you, it just doesn't add anything. And it's not, it's not pertinent to like the user's experience, like looking at like Pulp Fiction, right? That's not the display. That's not the release here. That's not what that is. That is when that post in WordPress, the CMS was published, which doesn't make any sense. And is not something that we really need. So my point in saying all this is the fact that we have our default thing, but just like our other situations, like we saw with the archives, we want to edit it, we want to change it, we want to make it better and more suited for our needs. And the way that we have to do that, we have to edit our search results template. So the way that we can kind of do this here is again, we can just, you know, come in here and do the same stuff that we've done, just very simple, like little, um, uh, you know, headings and, and all that. Um, we could say, you know, we'll create one, we'll just say like search results. And I do want to say the reason I'm doing this so like, simply like I'm not doing anything crazy is because I really want you to understand the, the functionality when you understand the functionality then you can start utilizing other tools and other templates and things like that to build whatever it is that you need or whatever it is that you want faster but if you don't understand the fundamentals of how this stuff works then it's really really kind of tough to like just start diving into that level of abstraction uh, because it because then you might get like confused because you're like oh I thought this thing works like this but it doesn't and it's just tough so Here's what I'm going to do for you here. The first thing we're going to have is a heading, then we're going to have some basic text, and we can just say like search results. Um, we'll just say search results, okay? And the beautiful thing about Bricks specifically is you can just add in like little, um, you can add in pieces directly into it. So with Elementor, I know you could do before and after, but you could just like put multiple uh, variables basically, you know, like little pieces of dynamic data right into here. So for instance, if we come into and we search for search term, that's automatically something that's in most page builders. It's going to know. It's going to know when you're on the page, when you're on the search term page, uh, what the search term is because it's pulling it, you know, basically right out of the uh, right out of the the URL bar there in a sense. Um, but yeah, so search results and then that'll populate when we have a search results uh, term in there. If we press save and then we come down and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add another section uh, and I'm going to paste in a, um, actually, I'm going to go over to our builder here, and I'm going to grab this block again. I'm going to copy in this, this block just to save time, okay? The reason we're doing this is because I want to make this as straightforward as possible for you with the 
make it as as, seem, as as cohesive as possible, right? So we're gonna have search results. And like we said, let's go back for a second. If we go to our search results here, this isn't what we want. We don't want it to look like this. We don't, we could change the top for sure and everything like that, but we don't want it to look like this. We don't wanna have uh, our date in there. So we need to display the search terms, right? Like we need to display something more like this, something more pertinent, right? Like in, obviously in this, in this instance, it, it makes sense to have a date in there, but in our instance, it doesn't. So we need to edit it. So that's what we're doing. So we're coming back in, we did a new section, we have a little block, and this block is our new card or our new loop item for our search results. It doesn't have to be the same as the other ones that we've done, but just for the sake of simplicity, it is. But the one thing that's important here is we have to realize what we're doing. We are creating, what we need to query here is the search results. And in Bricks, it's actually, I think, quite simple. You can just get rid of all the stuff that you have in here, which we had like rating in there from before, and we had ascending title, all that. I mean, you could edit those things if you want, but the point is you don't want to influence, you only wanna influence the search results so much. If you only wanna show posts or movies or whatever, then you can do that. But the idea is that you want to create that query with a lack of specificity because it's a search. It's not like you're not, you're not controlling what they see, they're searching for it. I mean, you're controlling it to an extent, but you're not controlling everything. So, um, so more or less, that's what that's what you're kind of doing with that. But you need to have a query still, but it's just like the query that is the search, basically. Um, so if we refresh here, we're not going to see anything again because we have to go over here and we have to go to template settings. And now what we have to set this search results thing to be is the search results, right? And if we press save, then we come back over and we're going to see something different now. So what do we have? Obviously, the template has changed. It went from the default, like vanilla template, to what we had. And we have search results and we have search results for pulp. Notice that this gets pulled in directly from uh, dynamic data, the search term element, right? So we can come up here and we could type in like something else and now we're not gonna see anything. We could also do something there where there's no results, um, but that's more of a slight page builder uh, situation, but let's, let's forget about that for right now. So the other question is like, you know, you have like if we search for something else like inception, right? Then we see inception. Um, if we searched for just like maybe just like a letter then we can see like a bunch of different things, right? So the idea is that this is a very, what I would call like slightly rudimentary search, but it's just a very broad search of, of what you kind of like are thinking, what you wanna do, um, and kind of it's a good place to start. Could be enhanced like tremendously. You could change the query. You could even do things like where the, like, you know, you could separate it out, sort of how like uh, IMDB has with titles and people. Um, but I would say that's slightly outside the scope of this particular tutorial in this video. I really just want you to understand that the search results thing is baked in. You do not need to necessarily download a plugin to do any sort of crazy search within WordPress. You every pretty much every page builder is going to have something like this for sale. Let's go back to our homepage for a second and let's type in search. And this one is a specific bricks one, but there's normally always a a um a search thing somewhere, right? So we have our little search box and then if we have search um, you know, you can leave empty to do default, like home URL, da, 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 um, input, all this sort of stuff. Obviously some of these things are bricks related, but there's always like a search, like a standardized search box, mostly in, in page builders. So if we come back and we just go to our homepage, for instance, because like what I've taught you to this point, right, is there's no way to actually like manual, there's no, like that was a manual search. Like we put that in the, in the header or in the URL bar. But the question you're going to have is like, well, how do I actually search something? Like if I wanted to show somebody something. Well, I mean, you could just create that little search thing and then you search it like that, right? And then, you know, pulp, there you go, okay? Hopefully that's making sense. Again, if there's any questions, leave them in the comments below. I'm trying to give you a high level overview on how these things work, how they operate, because if you can understand that, then you realize that how much power WordPress has just in itself, and then it can be it's ex extended with other plugins and things, uh, rather than just like kind of diving into that realm like right away and um, kind of mucking about there. So yeah, um, that is it for the search results there. Now the last template type that we're gonna talk about is section. And section is an interesting one and I've particularly put section right here next to components because we'll get to components, but these two kind of run in line in a way, okay? And I'm gonna do my best to explain to you why you would wanna use potentially a section template at some point and kind of give you like a little bit of a use case for it. But ultimately, at a high, high level, I don't really have a great example of it um, because it's so particular in the way that it is. But 
at a high, high level is the way you can think about this is if you think of a website as sections, right? You think of every single piece of a website as a as an individual section. So you look down a homepage, right? And maybe maybe we could do this as a as a, as an example. Also, I'll, I'll leave this link in the description because if you are using Bricks, great resource for an intro to templates and everything like that that we're talking about here in this in this part of this video. But if you, th if you think about if we look at this page, right, and we think about what is a section, the the real um, you know idea of a section is when you're going down a page, what are the different ideas, or what are the different pieces of it, literally the sections. So I would call like this first top part here. I would call this a section, and then I want to call featured today another section. I'd say what to watch is another section. Um, maybe from your watch list would be another section. You know, depending on how you lay it out. But maybe we could say at least all of the you know the yellows, right, are, are different sections. Now, here's the thing. There's no great again like example for this, but if you wanted to have, let's say you wanted to have one specific section that was the same and you're going to use it over and over again on different parts of your website and you want one singular place to change it right maybe it's a maybe it's a section that's like a kind of a call to action okay and you want to put that in the middle of pages you want to put that at the bottom pages you want to put that wherever and then you want to put that in all these different places and you want to have one place where you can change everything that is the best description that i can give to why you would want to use a section template, okay? The point of it is it can't change, like the structure of it and everything cannot really change from one place to another. I will show you, I'll show you kind of two quick examples about this because there are ways to kind of um, like hack it slightly, but ultimately there's there's really just like, you. it's, it's something that you cannot change structurally or, or, or um, or like the the HTML and like the CSS pieces of it like are going to stay the same throughout the thing. It's 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 like kind of a carbon copy throughout wherever you bring it. Let's just kind of move through and uh, kind of show you what I'm talking about. Let's call this let's call this um, uh, CTA section, okay? And let's come over here and we'll do a section and we'll say publish and we'll say edit with bricks. And all we're going to build here is just something super super chill. Um, we're going to come in here and we're going to go just heading um, and we're going to go text and we're going to go button. We haven't used a button yet, I don't think. There we go. Okay. So this section is our is our is going to be our CTA section. Again, you can't look at the header and the footer here. Like that's not, don't worry about that. That is just how the builder renders it. Um, it is not important to what you're to what you're seeing here. Just focus on the part that we're actually building and the stuff that's in this structure panel over here. What I'll do for us here is I'll add a little background so we know like what the the extent of the sections are, um, just so we have something. And we'll say like for our heading, we'll come in here and we'll say like CTA section, and we'll come down here and we'll just leave that there and that's fine. Okay. The point is that what we've created here is just looks like a standard section, but this is a template. So all those other times that we have created templates, right? What was the thing that we did right before we went to go look at it? Well, we would come in and we would click like template settings and things like that and conditions and all that. But the problem is here is that the way that we do that, this doesn't really have conditions because it it's just a piece of a, of a bigger page. It's not like the full template of a, you know, it's not the full template of a page uh, or like a, it's not an archive template. It's not a single template not a search results, not an air page. It's just a template that you kind of stick in to another like page or post or whatever, right? Or another template. It's kind of like template inception. Haha, <laughs> funny. Anyway, this is this right here. This little gray part is our section template or CTA section. Now let me sit now you're saying what do we do with this? Fair question. Okay. Let's go over to our our home page at bricks. Just our main, just our main one. We've just been playing around here, all this sort of stuff. Okay, so let's say like in the middle of this page somewhere, right? We have a bunch of data. In the middle of this page, right below the search, we want to give them this. We want to put this template in here, the CTA section. It's in the middle. It's in the middle of the page. This is the home page. It's in the middle of the page. Depending on what builder you're using, you're going to look for something called template, most likely. 
and you're going to insert that element into the, the, the page itself. You're going to click on that and you're going to want to change it to your CTA section. Okay. Now, this is interesting. What's happening here? So we're going to save that. We're going to pop back out here for a second. Look at this. Now, again, it looks like shit. Okay. That's not the point. The point is that right here now we have injected basically into this page the, the template that, that we created, our section template. That's the point of a section template is that you can have this everywhere. You can have, you can have the same thing in multiple places. We can go put this on a, we could literally go, let's, let's do another quick example. We could go over to another template that we created. We could go over to bricks templates. We could go down to um, search results, I guess, I suppose it's fine. Um, actually, let's do a different one. Let's do like um, the movie single or something. And let's throw in another another element in here. Let's go to right below, um, right below our heading. Like why not? Doesn't it doesn't matter where it is? I don't want to put it necessarily at the top or the bottom because I don't want you to get confused if it's the footer. It's not the footer. It's not the header. It's literally just it's another element, and it's a template that is being pulled from somewhere else. So for instance, let's do this. Okay. So then we have our. Um, we still have it here, CTA section, here goes button, da 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 da, okay. But then we have, um, as an example, if we go to, uh, if we duplicate this, and we go to slash movies, slash Pulp Fiction, well, that's interesting, wait a minute. Now we have the same section in here, but we didn't, we didn't create that, we didn't, in, we didn't like put in, in this template here, in the uh, single template, we didn't put like a header and basic text and all that, we're utilizing a section template there. Now you're, you're probably still at this point wondering, okay, well, what, why is this good? What is the, what is the deal there? Well, the cool part now is that this like section that is injected into this is there's one place that you can change it and it'll change everywhere. You could have that in all of your templates. You could have it everywhere, your main call to action, whatever. And if you change it right back here at the actual section template and you change it to new section template or whatever. Okay. And you say save, then you come back over to your homepage. Boom. And if you come back over to the singles that you put it in, boom. So there's an important point here. It's really helpful and impactful. Um, it, like if you have a use case for that, if you have a use case for like one section, that's like the same everywhere, always does the same thing, the buttons, you know, whatever, all the same and all that sort of stuff. That's how you do that. Okay really good for that. That's like phase one of like section templating. I'm going to tell you phase two, and then I'm going to tell you how components are similar, but definitely different and definitely offer a lot more variety. Let's talk about phase two for a second. Phase two is our second example um, that you could potentially consider doing depending on like what you're trying to do. What you could do is in every page, for instance, right? So if we go over to our, um, if we go over to our page, we could do something like, actually, let's come back. And let's let's start over with a new template. So we come to new we come to our templates. We go add new again. We say section, and we say what we're going to do here is we're going to say hero section. Okay. Now a hero is that first thing that you always see pretty much on all of your all of your the pages that you visit on the website on on websites, right? It's either got like you know maybe it's a title and like a description or something, or maybe it's got like a background and, and something like that. You can create sort of like a section header or a section um, template for a hero section if that if something if that's something that you wanted to do and you could utilize that on every single like page and post and all the templates that you have. So just to give you another quick example here, I went ahead and I created another section, same way we did with the CTA section. It's essentially the exact same type of template, but it is we just called it something different. And then if we go into edit that, again, I just threw in like a section, a container, and a heading. The only thing we need to really look at here is the heading. The heading, instead of now saying something, you know, just like um, like static in there, it has uh, dynamic content. In this case, we just put post title. So what's interesting is you could change, you could change, it doesn't have to be post title. You could set some sort of uh, field on every single page and post or whatever, and then that would be dynamic set to... Uh, that would be something dynamic that you could display in this section on each page that you put it in. But as an example, um, 
you know, as kind of like that phase two, version two type thing of these of these types of uh, section templates that's not all the same, but has maybe a little bit of dynamic data. This is maybe one thing that you could finagle into a, uh, you know, more of a dynamic situation. So what I mean is, if you have this template, you have the heading as uh, the post title, and then you come over to our home page now. All I did here, and I'll show you in the, in the editor in a second, but all I did here was I now have that section as the hero section per se of the home page. And you can see all I did there was pull in the template again and I put it at the top above you know anything that I'm building in this page and then that kind of can act as the hero. Uh, and the, the idea would be you'd probably have to put that though in all the templates and the, the you know either the single templates or the archive templates that you want. So here over here, this is the single template that we we're working on. And I have this, the first thing in here, first thing in this builder, I have a template. It's the same template, right? So if I added or changed anything uh, to the to the main, you know, uh, hero section template that we have, it would change throughout. Uh, but it doesn't look exactly the same, right? The text is different because like here to here, right? The, the yellow, everything in yellow there is the same template but the dynamic, but there's dynamic data being pulled in for that for that header piece. So again, um, you know, another option, something to do. It's not fully, it's not the best thing though, because it's not. You can't do like anything to it, um, which is kind of where we start to get into more of. We start getting past sections and past templates, and now there's like kind of kind of a new, newer, I guess maybe, or a, a something that's coming onto the scene more so with components and components are already kind of in WordPress core actually they have just been like recently released I guess as far as uh, you know as May 4th uh, you know uh, 2024 um, so it's something to kind of look into with bricks it is literally on the roadmap and coming soon so I can't really exactly show you in bricks but the idea would be I can give you a sort of like a high level is the idea would be you'd have a template like this, and maybe you'd have even more things in here. Maybe you'd have like some some basic text, okay? So you'd have something like this, and then you'd be able to take this template and then pop it into a page, and then in and this would be your you know source of truth type thing. Still, this this template that you that you're building, but you'd put it into a page, and then you'd be able to the terminology that Core uses is override it. But basically, you're making changes to that instance of the component, which could be extremely powerful, depending on what you want to do with it. But um, yeah, I mean, you could literally like put put this into uh, you know, so we can pop this in. Let's and actually, let's just look here. So let's refresh this, and we'll use this as an example. So we come back over here. So now we have like this as our you know uh, our hero section, for instance, right? But like, let's say that we put this into the, and again, we can't do this right now with bricks, but I'm trying to just give you the high level for when you when you hear the word component, this is what they're basically talking about depending on the page builder and what you can do with it. But it takes it a step further because instead of just being a template that you drop in and it kind of has to be the exact same, like the whole HTML and everything like that has to be the exact same, you could come in here and you could like actually change what these things say in these given instances. But then if you, but then if you go back to your template, you can make changes at the main template, and 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 those changes would would ripple and update into the instances of it. That's how you have to think of it. There's one singular um, kind of like layout, we'll call it for the for the for the component. That's like the main again source of truth, and then past like when you when you insert it into different pages, those are instances, and for each piece you can like override. Uh, you know, you can give act, editing access to certain things. So last example for you, let's say that you wanted to, you know, put in one of these um, kind of CTA type things. And, we'll, and for lack of a, for instead of going somewhere else, we'll just do it right here. So let's just say you want this to be your, your header on every site or whatever, right? So you have something like this. The idea would be that you can kind of turn on and off each time so like if you put this into your home page and you put it into your singles and stuff like that each time you put it in different places you can turn on and off different things where you can say like okay well I want I want the people to be able to edit this text right here but I don't want them to be able to touch the button or the anything about the button or anything about the title 
uh, or the heading. So you so you can just like change it so this piece can be, you know, editable. Um, yeah. So I mean, that, I, I don't know if that's a great explanation. Just look up components if you want to see more about that. Again, like I'm kind of handcuffed here because Bricks doesn't have it yet, and I don't have the Gutenberg plugin kind of installed because it's not even fully in there yet. But it is a really interesting concept. Um, I'm very happy that WordPress Core is, uh, you know, kind of leading the charge, so to speak, a little bit on that. I know other page builders have it as well. But, um, but yeah, so I'm kind of excited about components because that's going to definitely open a lot of windows and uh, doors to opportunities and things like that. All right, so that pretty much does it for components. The next thing we have to talk about is options pages. And this is where, um, again, this was another kind of like a really light bulb moment when I figured out what options pages were. And every single plugin again handles it differently some might have them some might not have them i'll give you the high level and i'll give you some examples um, of when you would want i'm not actually going to give you examples of other ones because there's not really per se any need but i'm just going to talk you through this and then i'm going to show you how to do it an options page is here's here's when you would here's when you know you need an, op an options page or you need options or these whatever you call these types of things right when you when you are thinking about your website and you're thinking about information that shows up often but isn't associated to a specific like type of post that we've talked about or a type of like content type or anything like that um, the best way is to give some examples so you can kind of understand is let's say that you use your phone number in a bunch of places for your business the, the easiest place to start is kind of like business details it's kind of like options Options pages would be similar to like when you go to a profile in a in an app or in some sort of website and you fill out all of your details for your profile details. I'm not telling you to use this for profile details, but those types of things are are probably going to persist in possibly different places. So if you ever fill out like business details or anything, th those business details are going to be used in different places and things like that. When you're building a website. For yourself you're not going to have or for your own business or for a client you're not going to have those details really in post types most most likely um, you know you'd have the team member information maybe in in their in their posts you know in the team member posts you'd have all that sort of stuff but the question becomes where do you put the standardized info like maybe a logo maybe a like a a phone number for the business an address for the business um, multiple addresses for the business, um, social uh, links, right? Like the URLs for social links, all those types of things. The first thing that you're going to say is, well, Mark, I could just, you know, I'm going to have them in the footer. I could just write them down there. I'm going to have them on the contact page. I can just write it there. I might have them in the header. I could just write it there. Uh, I might have it on the home page somewhere or something. I might, write, might just write it there. You could, you could. Um, but I've literally had developers tell me this. It's like, okay, well, my client moved offices, right? So they moved from ABC Street to XYZ Street. And now this address is written at least like six different places on, on the website on like maybe landing pages and different stuff like that or whatever. And it's like, how do I manage all that? How do I make sure that I got all of the locations? How do I make sure that I, I change this address everywhere? Well, the simple answer is options pages. And it's incredible. And when I, when I realized it, I was like, holy shit, this is amazing. So... Um, really, it's, it's quite simple. Uh, in and I will, I will I have to talk about this, and this is the reason that I was using different tools for this is because ACF options pages um, I'm pretty sure is a pro feature. Okay, so if you want to use ACF for options pages, you need to buy this. You need to buy it. Jet Engine is already a premium tool, so I'm going to display and I have it, so I'm going to show you how to do an options page on here. But it's a similar, it's a very similar experience. Okay, so an options page, what is that? Well, what you're going to do is you're going to go to options pages in jet engine you're going to click add new you're going to give the page a title this part is a little confusing because you can have multiple different options pages and within each options page are like a set of options you can call them okay and so we're going to go to page title and we'll just say like uh say options options one whatever okay and it's actually like a like a little page like you'll see it it's going to pop up here on the left hand side just like if we were creating a custom post type all that so we could say options page. They they let you set like a menu uh, name for everything. You can put it under you know something if you wanted to, like under a, a parent menu. Again, this is all Jet Engine right here. Um, you can give it a different icon, just like we could with uh, you know uh, ACF and all these other ones. They give you a lot of customization as far as how you see it on on the left hand side here. Access capability. You can say manage uh, options. You can say activate plugins. 
all these different things. Okay, like there's there's even more than what I'm just saying here, but we're just going to stick with the, the main thing for a second here. So manage options. That's just, you're literally just like adding different fields and text and things like that. I'll show you. And then the position, uh, this is like where, you know, it shows up and everything like that, depending on where you're at. Uh, where you want to put it on the left hand side field storage type you can say default as array or separate again some, some we're just getting a, we're just we're just scraping the service here we don't need to go super deep with those types of things but you have more options for that and then hide field names if that's something you want to do here's where you actually create this stuff okay so down here it says fields so you say add new field all right so give me give me one that you'd want like we'll say like business address okay and then we'll come down here so it gave us a label and again, this we didn't see this because we didn't create the CPTs with Jet Engine, but this is a very similar experience to how you would create a field, a custom field in a, uh, you know, for custom for a custom post type. It's the same type of thing. So you give it a label, you give it a name, um, then object ID. You want field unless you're you know playing around with some different stuff. It's just a basic field, and then field type. So again, the field types are a little different over here on Jet Engine, but ultimately, uh, you know, for a business address, you could just use. I mean, you could use actually. Uh, I believe they have, do they have a map or something? No, but you could do, you just, I mean, again, just a regular, regular text field, um, doesn't really matter. And you could do, uh, you could write a description, you could do different field width, you know, character limit, all the store stuff. You could say if it's required or not. You can do conditional logic, okay, all this stuff, okay? And then you press add. And then down here, uh, I love how Jet Engine actually puts this stuff in different areas. If you do Jet Engine custom post types, it actually has like a section similar to how this is on the left hand side where it's custom post types. Uh, but for options pages, it does the same. So then you click on options page. And now this is what you get. Okay, so you can say like, you know, I don't know, like one, two, three, main street, or something. Okay. And again, this is just an example, you can do whatever you want. So main street here. Okay, so that's where our business is. So then you go to your to your site, and you edit the main page, right. And you're like, okay, well, I want to put I want to put my address down here in uh, in my or wherever. Again, this looks like a mess, but again, we're just we're just showing you what's kind of going on here. With bricks, here's how this works. You can go like address, you can go dynamic data, and then down here you will see a section called Gen Engine Options One. That's that page, and you can say business address, right? And now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to copy that that basic text field, and I'm going to come down to our footer. And I'm just going to put it down there because this seems pretty normal to me that you probably want, you potentially want your address in your footer. And, oops, didn't mean to duplicate. There we go. So put that down there. We'll just make it so you can kind of see it real quick. Just change the color. Cool. All right. Doesn't need to be perfect. Just kind of showing you. All right. There. So we'll save that. All right. So now what's going to happen here is when I re reload this, I'm going to have address main street one, two, three up here. And I'm going to have address main street down here. Now, again, this is just two, two instances. But anything that you re anything you ever you don't ever want to type anything twice generally. So like anything that you're going to type more than once, you want to make sure that you're using either an options page or if it's a custom post type situation like that. But this is like a this is again more of just something that doesn't have to do. It's really just you're kind of setting. Honestly, you're kind of just setting in my mind like kind of like a variable or maybe it's a constant. I don't know. Like like you're just you're literally just saying like hey, if I ever need a business addressed. This is what I want the business address to be. I'm just going to set that in there, and that's what it's going to be. I guess maybe a constant. Yeah, it's kind of a, a good example if you were talking programmatically. I don't know. Anyway, um, that's what we're doing. Okay. So then, if we go to, this, you can see it here, right? Like this is here, and this is here. There's two different instances of that. But then, if we go back and we change it to like you know, four, five, three Main Street, we moved up the street here. And uh, I didn't. And your client comes to you and they say, "Hey, can you change our address in all these forty-five different places?" Again, whether or not your address is written everywhere, like you could think of like the social links or something else. Can you change all of our social links or social links or address or whatever? For sure, I can. So you do it one time, one place, and then boom, boom. Okay. So changed in all those different places. That is the power of options pages. That is like when you when you when you start using those crazy crazy options there. Again, can't speak for ACF's uh, different ways of doing things and the and the and the um, what their options page allows for, but this was the Jet Engine one. You can do a lot of different things here. You can even have like activate plugins and, and different stuff. So um, you know, there's just a lot of different a lot of different options for an options page is pretty much what it comes down to. Uh, so yeah, but um, 
that is kind of it as far as I would say for options. You have to use your imagination a little bit on how you'd use that. But just again, to, to recap, um, definitely use it for business addresses, social links, phone numbers, emails, um, like kind of a logo, honestly, a lot of times for me, depending on if you want to set your site logo and I don't know if Bricks, I, I'm not even sure if Bricks can necessarily, do, I think they can, I just haven't done it. But it's nice to have like, another thing uh, real quick is like a, um, I think a lot of builders, you could use SVG logos, but it, like as an example for this, you could do like a light and a dark logo and then you could like just kind of um, sw swap them out depending on your methodology for, for going light and dark. Uh, literally anything that you, you're reusing. Even um, maybe like a blurb about your set, like your business or something like that that you're putting in different places. Anything that you're going to use repeatedly in multiple different places it would be huge for options. Uh, and just something that's easily like a lot more maintainable and easy to uh, play around with uh, as far as when you need to actually edit it. Okay, so options was the last thing on my list. We covered a lot here. Uh, I hope that you learned something from this list. Uh, this is everything that I can think of to this point. I will be making obviously more content on this channel about dynamic data and everything like that. But uh, if there's anything more specific to this, you will know before before I do right now because it'll be in this playlist. You can kind of go ahead and, and check out the, the further iterations of the videos. But until that point, uh, thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a lot of fun with dynamic data in WordPress. I hope you understand it a lot better than you did when you came into this series and um, go out there and just make some really cool sites. So thank you so much and I'll talk to you in the next one.